I'm Steph. I'm Jay. And this is Modern Motoring. fun with this comparison probably not very many people at all are going to be cross shopping a 2022 toyota 4runner trd <laughs> pro on a 12 year old platform with a 2022 land rover defender which was brand new hotly anticipated last year one of the um, more hotly anticipated vehicles on the market but, but if you are we're happy you tuned the in two vehicles that we're looking at you would assume they would be very very different on price but they're not as different on price as one might think you're right because the one we're in here this is the Land Rover Defender. This is the uh, SP300. Right. The base price on this, this is the base base Defender. So the base price on it is 65.5, I think. You're right. Um, and then this one has some options on it. Well, quite a few options on it, actually. So right. it lands at about 75, and that includes a destination charge. So without that, I think we're at about 73. Right. Whereas the uh, TRD Pro is um, a, a fifteen thousand dollar add-on to one of the trims on the Forerunner, I think, but it ends yeah. up being about sixty-seven thousand dollars. I would go with the Forerunner. I just I find it's got that nice, sturdy look to it. I don't need everything to be modern, new age with all the latest, you know, LED this and fancy design lines. Give me tried and true, and that's why I lean closer towards the Forerunner appearance-wise. Than I do the Defender. I especially like what Toyota's done with the TRD Pro package oh, because some so of those nice. extra little bits just give it exactly what it needs to get that extra little cool factor on something that really shouldn't be that cool given what it is. Right. Um, that there's the roof rack, there's the skid plate, um, the TRD badging on the yep, rear quarter, the hood scoop, uh, it's yep. and that lime rush paint. I know people are going to have varying opinions about it. I really like I it. I think what we said in our in our review is that it's kind of meant to be a blank canvas, mm -hmm. and it looks like a blank canvas. It's, there are 170 accessories available for this thing, so you can really dress it up however you want, and that's part of the appeal. That's part of why people would seek this vehicle out. Let's talk power. Let's talk driving. So with the 4Runner, there's no replacement for displacement, I believe is the saying. Yes. Four liter V6, 270 horsepower, 278 pound feet of torque, five speed <laughs> transmission. And then the P300 has a two liter turbocharged four with 296 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. And we're gonna stick with the P300 for a direct comparison because those power figures are very close to each other where they wouldn't be in the P400. Since you're in the driver's seat, mm -hmm. which way would you lean towards something you could live with on a daily basis? I don't think it's a very uh, hard decision to say that, you know, the, the powertrain in the 4Runner is probably the thing about it that needs updating the most. It's, right. it's a dinosaur as yeah. powertrains go. Um, it's pretty slow to get the weight of the 4Runner going, and the 4Runner itself, you know, very rugged body-on-frame construction, which is one of the things that's, that appeals about it to mm -hmm. the people that are still seeking it out. It's it's very sturdy, well-built, very capable, and it's got a, you know, not that this doesn't have a proper four-wheel drive system, it does. Right. This one's on a unibody construction, so the, the 4Runner, you can take it pretty much anywhere, you can take this pretty much anywhere too, we'll get to that in a second, but right. it's that, that classic body on frame, you know, you can throw it anywhere kind of ruggedness that people right. find appealing, but it also, when you're driving it day to day, you get that shuddering, that sort of yeah, rough it's ride. Not that, the smoothest exactly. daily driver, whereas we have kind of the opposite here, you know, for the week that we've had it. Uh, yeah, there's an eight speed transmission here, which is nearly double of what the Forerunner has, but <laughs> for it being the smaller engine and it being the one I think that will do the best in city driving conditions, it's still a smooth drive. There's a little bit of muddiness between gears two, three, three, and four, and sometimes four and five if you're going off the line, hanging out at lower speeds. But I think by kilometers, not by miles, because we're in Canada, yeah. <laughs> um, I think that I would lean towards the 
Defender as something I could live with day to day, have a smoother ride. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's the optional $1,600 air suspension, which Steph would get. I would get, and it's not even available. There's nothing like that really on the 4Runner, which just shows right. how much more advanced this is in terms of the technology that's avail available for it. Right. Now, that being said, I drove both of these vehicles in that snowstorm that we had. Right, it's, so it's the beginning of February when we're filming this. Yes. Probably mid-February if the editor gets his stuff together. <laughs> uh, anyway, carry right. on. Right, <laughs> so um, I have to say in the snow, I preferred the feel of the 4Runner. Really? I really did. I, there's something about the steering on the Defender that doesn't feel as direct to me. I is didn't it, feel as I was connected to the road. Is it lighter, do you find? I, it's just doesn't give as much feet. Now we're here in the 2022 mm -hmm. 4Runner, and the reason why we've swapped into this car is because we're going to talk about the interiors, and Jay is you winding up for a rant on this one. Here we go. 4Runner interior by a kilometer. Wow. Hundreds of kilometers. Really? That's that's a big statement. There's no guesswork. I know where the dials are. I know where the buttons are. They're big, fat, chunky buttons. Kind of like me, a little bit. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> no. There's no guesswork. If I want the heat up, I want to have my fan speed up. I want the rear, whatever controls are here in the 4Runner, I know where they are. Even after a week of driving, let alone having three, four, five years with it, even the off-road controls that are just above right here, uh, there's no guesswork. I don't want to be doing 100 plus on the highway and guessing at what I'm having to adjust. I don't want to take my eyes off the road in a snowstorm and a rainstorm. Whatever weird and peculiar road conditions there are, my eyes need to be straight here. For sure. And with the Forerunner, it's much easier to accomplish that. Right. The, the the Defender. Yeah, we talked about it in our review video, so if you want more detail, that's what to check out. But right. just the, the way that you have to twist and push and twist, and it's not intuitive. And I don't know if some things you would ever get used to just from owning the vehicle for even a, you know, a couple of years, because yeah, you don't just use loose. them all that often. So, right. um, yeah, I mean, yeah. the screen in this is not flashy, not impressive, but it don't does care. have a, uh, CarPlay and uh, Android Auto wired, but at least they're there. Exactly, and there's um, no issues with that, and if you want to higher resolution that's how you that's your workaround for right. it. just plug in your car car play car play <laughs> i don't know what kind of accent that is but know. uh <laughs> it is not my regular voice <laughs> but yeah car plays here and our auto is here again big huge buttons yeah the backup camera is a little on the low res side right but, that's but at least you, it works all the time at least it works all the time <laughs> which it didn't in our defender know, at the time is, that we had it um, and even the steering wheel, it's not heated. I don't care. I have so many pairs of gloves at home. <laughs> sure, it's a nice to have, but it's not going to be a deal breaker if I'm looking at the interior as far as which one I prefer. Right, and for comfort and space, I think you're looking at pretty well the equivalent. The seats mm -hmm. are comfortable, supportive in both. The amount of space for both rows is about the same in both. Your knees were not touched once in no, either No, I have. There. My knees are intact <laughs> with these two reviews. All right. Who's saying it? Who's going to say it first? This guy. Okay, own it. Let's go. Forerunner. Why? No guesswork when I'm driving. Okay. I know where, where everything is. I like the interior better. Yes, it's a different engine. That's my nice way of saying okay. there's going to be half the gears. Um, <laughs> but it's it drives like a truck. Mm -hmm. And it's got that solid feel to it. Yes, it takes a little longer to get up to highway speeds, but like there's no unsafe car on the road. The difference that you'll pay in price for the 4Runner, mm -hmm. you'll make up in paying for in gas. And so if yeah. emissions are a concern for you, probably you're not going to agree with us. And I can't believe I'm saying this either, but I, I also would take the 4Runner. <laughs> no. There's no slight against the Defender. It's right. the right car for a lot of people. people. We understand that a lot of people have been looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. It's highly customizable. You can do a lot of fun stuff with yeah. it. it and it's going to serve those people in, in the right ways. Incredibly well. It just happens that we're driving the base model, yep. which is good because it's it's comparable in price to this. If we were anything even slightly more than this, then we, probably we wouldn't, wouldn't do that. even be having this discussion. Right. But we're, we're looking at this exact price range. This has so much capability, you know, doesn't have the, the fanciest features. But you don't always need fancy to be no. effective. And for me, it's always been um, function over fashion and everything works when you want it to, yep. and, and you, you know, won't kill this thing. These things get driven oh into the gosh, ground. You, you hear about like in the States. 500, 600,000 yeah. mile, yes. not kilometer, yeah. mile forward. And they're still out there. There's this wild enthusiast community for it. But um, I didn't think we'd agree. 
No? We usually don't talk about these things beforehand because <laughs> um, we don't want it to be like rigged or set up, but okay. Right. I thought you were maybe going to go a little bit towards the defender. No. No? Okay, which no. is okay. Yeah. No, I think that you know, all the points we've made are valid ones, and there yep. are people who are going to choose a defender, and, and we wouldn't judge those people. But for me, reliable and, you know, sturdy yep. and go anywhere, which so does the defender. But, right. you know, there's just there's so much about this that's predictable and safe. And, and there's nothing wrong with living... A predictable life. There at least you not go. for me, at least not for the forward again. Just to wrap up, nothing's wrong with the defender. It has, as Steph was saying, a lot of redeeming qualities. And you'll see it, I think you'll see more defenders on regular city streets than you will forerunners. Um, but I you know for, for Steph and I, it's, it's, it's the forerunner. For sure.